I really don't think there's another immigration documentary quite like this one. There are a lot of films that have been made about immigration in one way or another, but I really think this film is unique in the, in the way that it lets you live in a place and see what it feels like to be in Brooks County, Texas, day in and day out as ordinary people uh, you know, deal with an, an ongoing situation, which is you know, unfortunately just all too commonplace there, just bodies showing up um, in, in people's private property, just people going missing you know, uh, on oftentimes a daily basis. And we were making the film for a reason, and it's to educate people about what's going on in Brooks County. Um, many people, and most people in Texas, even don't know what's going on in Brooks County. So I can imagine that no one else in the United States really knows what's going on. So it was important for us to make a film to educate people, but it's also, it was important for us to really highlight the families because we feel like if people and lawmakers saw what these families are going through, they would do something about it. You know, when you read something in the newspaper, you know, or even just a little blurb on TV about the immigration crisis or asylum seekers or even migrant deaths, you don't really have a sense that there are all of these people who are suffering, not just the person who has gone missing or has been found dead, but the, all of the family that, you know, is left behind to, to deal with this. We needed to sort of find uh, who we felt were the right uh, protagonists to, to, to tell this story and for us to just learn what the story was. We learned, for instance, that uh, really what's going on there is, is the result of um, policies that were started in the, in the Clinton administration in the 90s, um, which still exist to this day, um, which is a policy of, of uh, Border Patrol called uh, prevention through deterrence. And this is a theory that if, uh, if Border Patrol across the whole southern U.S. were to very deliberately make uh, certain areas much harder to cross and to basically funnel migrant traffic into other areas and into specifically the most dangerous areas, that this would act as a deterrent um, to um, un undocumented uh, immigrants. And that has not turned out to be true at all, um, ever. Um, and yet the policy persists. So uh, learning about that issue and then finding ways to, um, to bring that to life through various people that we found. So um, Eddie Canales, who, who runs as a sort of a through line through the film through his South Texas Human, right, South Texas Human Rights Center, um, he kind of connects all the other people in the story and we just had to be there enough. Um, Lisa and Jeff, specifically, uh, the two directors and co-cinematographers, had to be there enough to be around when people would come looking for their loved ones and to follow. Um, we followed really four stories and three of them really, really intensively, and two of them ended up in the film of um, you know long-term. In one case, it's a relatively short-term uh, investigation. One of them, it's a really long-term one of trying to this family trying for a very long period of time to try to find out what happened to um, Omero. So um, it's the usual challenges of sifting through lots of footage, of trying to decide which aspects of it can, um, can be the most meaningful, um, how we can um, uh, simplify some of the more complicated elements um, so that people can sort of grasp what's going on. And then, as Lisa said, it was really important to her and, and her co-director, Jeff Bemis, to show, um, to give a sense of what it's like to be there on a daily basis and to not have an inter interview-driven documentary, but rather a verite-driven documentary where you are just living with people who are doing things and to sort of um, see what that's like. So the, the area of Falfurias, Texas, and all of South Texas, in, in, in Brooks County specifically, is kind of another character in the film. So we went to Brooks County uh, on 15 different trips in the hopes of getting these real moments because we really didn't want to tell people what was going on in Brooks County. We wanted to show them and we wanted them to experience what was going on, what was really that going on there um, and just sort of like we were immersing ourselves, kind of immerse the audience in, in this place where there was, you know, this crisis is going on. So 
Um, and that took a while <laughs> to like, you know, get those moments. So there are little, you know, there are things that, that speak really loudly in the film that aren't about, they're not really about facts in the way that we ordinarily perceive facts. They're about, um, you know, human gesture and the, the human element in, in what is a complicated, you know, political, uh, political and humanitarian story. I think for us, like we wanted to make a memorable film that people were going to be thinking about for days, if not weeks or months. Because we, you know, we felt like, you know, what's going on there needs to change and it, it needs to be that powerful, I think, for, you know, to have people really take this seriously.